So now we're going to talk about dialogue. And what I'm going to need for you to do is go get this piece of paper. It's likely on that front table. If not, come and see me and I will let you know where it is. You will get this and glue it into your resource notebook wherever you've been gluing your other sample text like the paragraphing and the dialogue or the, um, the other one that we did. Um, we're going to take a look at dialogue today, and there's a couple of different things that you're going to be doing within your narrative. So you will need access to your narrative, whether you have a printed piece or if you have that pulled up on your laptop. Um, but you're going to be using the strategies that we're talking about here in your narrative that you are ultimately going to submit for a grade. What we're looking at is the way that dialogue is placed in text. And so you have been provided with four different examples and all of them do something slightly different with dialogue, but they also all do the same thing as far as grammatical. So we're going to take a look at this first one together and then I'm gonna have you just read through the other ones and see if you notice anything else. Um, we're going to, let's see, which one do we wanna look at? We'll use this first one, that's fine. All right, so go ahead and get a writing utensil and we're going to take a look at dialogue. And the first thing that I would ask you is, how do you know when someone's speaking in this text? What does the writer use in order to show the reader, hey, someone is talking? Okay, you will notice, of course, that you see all of these quotation marks that are all around anything that is being spoken the quotation marks are surrounding that space, all right? Um, so the first thing that I would think for you to do as you go into your text, is I'm gonna just go over to this piece of paper, is I'm gonna make a note to myself to check that all dialogue has quotation marks around it. Okay, so the first thing that you need to make sure of is that within your piece, not only do you know when a character is speaking because you're the writer, but you are showing your reader that that is when a character is speaking by using quotation marks. Because again, punctuation is not for you necessarily as the writer, it's for the reader so that the reader can read it the way that you intend. All right, so that's it, Lewis said. With the sun down, we won't be able to navigate as well. Can't we use the stars, Isabel asked. She remembered reading that sailors had used the stars to navigate for centuries. Okay, so I'm noticing here the parts that she's not saying have nothing around them. So I'm crossing that off for now so it doesn't seem to throw me away. I also notice here Lewis or Luis is speaking and then in the next line Isabel is speaking. Okay. And so what I noticed with that is what happened? What did the writer do before the next character started talking? Well, he, so this is by Alan Gratz, indented the next paragraph where the next character started speaking. So let's see what the next one says. Which one, Louise asked. None of them knew. So again, this is not being spoken. So I'm just gonna cross it off for now because my focus right now is the dialogue. Okay, and now here I go again. Now it's going to Louise again. And what do you do? Indented. Let's go to the next one. Amar lifted one of the gasoline jugs and swished around what little there was left in it. Saves us on gas, she said. So again, this is not being spoken. So I'm gonna cross it off. But this is, and now it's her talking again. She said. Okay, oh, and here she's still talking. And so instead of starting a new paragraph, since it's still her talking, what did he do? He just left it all together, okay? And then we have a new character being introduced here. Then when, when will we get there, Ivan asked. So what you would take away from this is you can see that there are four, five different spots where a new character is speaking. It's not a new character we haven't seen because we have Louise and Isabel and they have spoken a couple of times in here but then we have Ivan later so it doesn't matter that they're the same character but each time a different person talks what did the writer do they made a new paragraph so in things I noticed one thing I noticed is that new speaker equals new paragraph and they did that every single time. It didn't matter that Luis only had one line and it didn't even go all the way across. 
the fact that in the next line, this is about Amara, Amara, and Amara's talking, that's Amara talking, they kept all of that together. So this wasn't still about Luis lifting one of the gasoline jugs. We switched the character there and so made a new paragraph. So what you're going to do is there's three additional ones that are here and you are going to be taking a look at that. Um, in fact, let's do one more together because we did this one, we looked at the paragraphing. So let's do that with the paragraphing. This next one we're going to take a look at regarding the punctuating. Okay, so again, we already know that every time a new speaker is talking, there's going to be a new paragraph. So we know this is one person, this is going to be a different person, this is oh, not this person anymore, this one. So we know that that is happening because we just realized that in this last section. So that one told us new speaker, new paragraph. This one, we're going to look at some of the punctuating elements of that. So what I'm going to do is anything that is touching the dialogue or within the dialogue, I am going to circle punctuation marks. So I have a quotation mark and quotation marks, so that's speaking. And then within there, I'm going to look, is there any punctuation? And my answer is yes, there's a comma here. Okay, so then I am gonna circle my quotation marks in blue. I'm gonna do that first. Blue, 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 blue. And blue. And now I'm going to go within the blue and see what punctuation I have. I've got a comma here. I've got a question mark here. I've got a period over here. Another question mark. I got some individual quotation mark thingies and some commas. Okay. The big answer part that we're going to be taking a look at is actually going to be the punctuation mark that is directly before your ending um, quotation mark. So here it says, I think Max is really upset, comma, end quotation marks, Eric whispered. So when I take a look at this, they used a comma here, a question mark here, a comma here, a period here. So how do I know when to use a period, when to use a comma, when to use a question mark, when to use an exclamation point? What the writer is doing is here, I think Max is really upset. What I want for you to do is ask yourself, so they used a comma. If you would end that sentence with a period, like if you were just saying, I think Max is upset and you would end it with a period, but you're going to finish that with Eric whispered, okay? You don't use a period, you use a comma. I know this is gonna be confusing. Okay, so this, if I made that statement, that would be a period, but it, the, set question, the, bleh, the sentence isn't over because Eric's whispering. Here, it's not my fault, comma, said Jackie. So would I just say, it's not my fault, and that would be a period, yes, but they finished it with said Jackie, so they used a comma. I didn't know. Again, did we end with a period here? Yes, because that's how we would end that statement, but does it say said Jackie here? No. So because there's nothing else after that, that needs to be period. Okay, so one thing you know, or you should notice, is that um, a period or a comma, um, so this would be at the end of a sentence, and this would be followed by said blank. I don't know how to word that. Okay, but it's the idea of when do I use a period and when do I use a comma. The next one, let's see if we can find another one. So here's one. Okay, soap, Jackie, question mark, asked Eric. Okay, so even though there's a question mark here, this whole statement is read as one. Soap, Jackie, asked Eric. Like that's one sentence. So he did use a question mark because it's a question. But look at this A following the question mark. Do you see how it's lower cased? This is where dialogue gets fun. That's because that's still part of that one statement. Okay, soap Jackie asked Eric, soap? Really? So let's take a look at how to word this one. Well, we're gonna put question mark or exclamation point, because they both work the same way. 
one, but this one's not going to show us this. Okay, if the statement that someone speaks, the words inside of the quotation mark are a question, or there's something that would be shouted, stop, I yelled, or stop, yelled Joe, you will use that punctuation mark, okay? Soak that in. If inside of the quotation marks, you would use that punctuation, if there is nothing after it, you use that punctuation. If, however, it's followed by, like, asked Eric, the asked is not capitalized because it's still part of the same whole thought right here. All right, so exclamation point and exclamation point you use inside the quotation marks if question or exclamatory. Okay. You uh, level of confusion right now? What I want for you to do is go to your narrative and do two things. Okay, start with one actually. Start with the first thing. The first thing I want for you to do in your piece is to check that every time someone new is talking, you put quotation marks around the words that are coming out of people's mouths. So that's the first thing you need to go do is go into your piece and every time someone talks, when they start talking, put a quotation mark. When that person is finished talking, put an ending quotation mark. These are the words spoken. Okay, so that's the first thing I want for you to do. After you have done that, the second thing that I want for you to do is go into your piece again, and each time there's a new character, speaking, make a new paragraph. Okay, so that's the next thing you do. You make a paragraph by hitting enter, and then the first time you'll need to hit the tab key, that will indent you. Oftentimes from then on, every time you hit enter, it will automatically indent you. So pay attention to whether or not it's automatically doing that or not, okay? So each time there's a new character speaking, you need to make a new paragraph. First, make sure you have quotation marks around your dialogue. Then when there's a new character speaking, make a new paragraph. After that, you can start to look at some of these um, elements of when to use a period or a comma. These texts right here will give you different examples of that. Mr. Uh, your teachers can help you. And on page 92 of your resource journal, there is also different places where there are dialogue rules. Okay, so when you come up and ask, we are going to help you, but I'm going to ask, well, what did you notice? Or what have you tried so far? Because I know this is kind of confusing but keep going because all of them do the same thing because this is how dialogue works. So if you're like, I don't know the difference between a period and a comma, in one of these next ones, just look for when they use a period versus when they use a comma, okay? Think of why is this H capitalized? Well, it's a next sentence. It's not finishing this sentence. It's a new sentence. Okay. All right, let me know if you have questions. We'll be coming around to check. Before you get too lost in all of this though, do these two things in your narrative so you can see what we're dealing with first. All right.